Okay, so we're taking a look at how to use the Regal DDS generator to hopefully generate sort of what we're calling a hash T1 measurement. And uh, the basic idea is up on the board up here. The idea is that we have a two drum setup where we have uh, the probe of the readout resonator is always on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch on and off the, the drive signal for the qubit. And the idea is that we turn the qubit drive on for a certain amount of time, and then turn it off, and the qubit, uh, say, occupation will exponentially rise up with the time of T1 uh, and saturate. And then after a certain amount of time, when you turn the switch off, it'll decay back down, and then it will also with time T1. And the idea is that we're going to leave the readout on all the time, but we want to just snip out these little bits of the exponential, so we're going to apply a gate to the, to, the, to the signal coming back out of the device so that we're only capturing a certain uh, amount of transmitted readout power in a certain time window. And then we, we, we're going to set the, the VNA slow, so it's just going to measure the average power. And then we're going to sweep. We want to, to step this readout pulse with respect to the, uh, with respect to the turn off of here. And doing so, the average power should show basically the ring down time as a function of this delay time. So how are we going to configure this? Um, so over here, we'll be playing around with the, the Regal generator. Uh, you can see my DDS notebook about the limitations of a DDS. Actually, what's, so here I've configured it to a, five, a 10 microsecond periodicity of the, of the Rita qubit drive, so that it's five microseconds on, five microseconds off. That's this yellow line. And then I've configured the second channel to make this little readout gate, which is then going to go on for 100 nanoseconds and turn back off. We can make that longer if we want. It doesn't make sense to make it shorter because the very fancy, expensive microwave switches we have in Taylor Microwave only have a 100 nanosecond switching speed. So <laughs> uh, it doesn't really make sense to turn those on faster than that. So then. Um, Okay, actually, they have a 20 second ri nanosecond rise time, so maybe that's. I don't know if the switching speed is on, off, on, or what. Anyways, doesn't matter. We're going to stick with 100 nanoseconds, which is safe. So already you can see one of the. What's kind of nice, kind of, well, nice or interesting to see is that if I look carefully on the scope, there's quite a bit of noise in the pulse. It looks like there's a bunch of finite rise times. And these finite rise times are exactly the, the artifact that is introduced by the DDS synthesis method because of the fact that it's stepping through at a constant sample rate and uh, using a sort of uh, rounding of the integer uh, to retrieve the digitized pixel out of the wa fixed waveform memory. You can see that in more detail on my Jupyter notebook, but in any case, it's kind of fun to see it here in real life. But on the other, so it's clearly visible, but it's not a killer because this is a 10 nanosecond per division, so it's maybe 15 nanoseconds. And on the 100 nanoseconds that we're carrying about here, it doesn't really matter. So there is some peculiarities of the Regal generator to get this running. So uh, it's in pulse mode. Uh, so channel one is the five microseconds with on off uh, as a delay. Oh. Yeah, there's a delay right now of five microseconds for technical reasons that we'll get to in a minute. Then the, uh, this is the readout pulse, 100 nanoseconds. Actually, we set the delay to zero. And a bit counterintuitively, if you set the delay, it moves the pulse that way on the scope. So, and you can't set a negative delay, so actually we have to delay the yellow pulse. So uh, in this case, the settings are that I've set the delay of the yellow pulse the qubit drive pulse to be five microseconds, and it aligns the readout gate over here with uh, so that it starts reading out the qubit when the uh, readout re starts to pulse to the readout readout cavity, allowing the pulse from the readout cavity to go through to the VNA. At uh, just starts up when this one cuts off. Then the way the experiment will work is we'll set everything up, set up uh, the VNA to measure. We're going to go into continuous wave mode of VNA, zero span mode actually, so that it just measures versus time. We're going to maybe take one second of data. And then 
we're going to go and reconfigure the generator, and we're going to delay the channel one pulse by now an extra 100 nanoseconds. And the first thing you see is things seem to disappear, but that's because you have to push your line phase button every time you change the setting. That's also how DDS generators work, and all generators. So uh, the procedure is that now you can see that it, now that I've got a now that I've aligned the phase with a 5.1 microsecond delay, the readout gate is now delayed by 100 nanoseconds. And then you take your 100 points in the VNA or one second theta in the VNA, whatever, and and then you do that again and align phase, and now it's delayed by 200. And do it again, and now it's 300, and 400, and 500, and we can zoom out, and then we can go further. 600, 700, 800, 900, yeah, etc., 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 and doing so, the average power that our VNA receiver C should follow the exponential decay of our qubit relaxation, thereby giving us access to Q1, and that is the theory.